All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna talk about hormones within our fig trees. And yes, by the way, plants have hormones. Fig trees have hormones. Not only do we have hormones like estrogen, testosterone, insulin, cortisol, and many more that work together in a balance and impact us in quite dramatic ways, but fig trees and plants also have hormones. And if we can understand these hormones within our trees and actually how to impact the hormones the right way for our purposes, we're gonna be a lot more successful. In fact, I would argue this is a very important topic to understand in the world of plants and fig trees. And it's really, I would say, right underneath the importance of having the proper amount of sunlight. And so, if we have the right balance of hormones, our fig tree typically is gonna fruit. If our trees are out of balance, we actually may have a fig tree that likes to grow and doesn't fruit. And so a lot of the time when I get questions every year, when I show you guys the fruits I have, it's without fail. Some of you guys ask me, Ross, my fig tree is big, it's beautiful, it's lush, it's established, it's healthy. Uh, but it just doesn't fruit. Well, why is that? And usually it's a lack of sunlight, but in some cases, you guys could be dramatically impacting your fig tree in the wrong way by impacting the hormones. So how do we actually impact the hormones? Well, it's really through pruning. And so if we do a lot of winter pruning, and it doesn't matter if it's from our own pruning shears, loppers, a chainsaw, uh, you know, a saw of any kind, or if it's winter time damage, the trees, the fig trees have no idea of the difference. It's all the same to them. The, the truth is it happens in the winter time, it's happening during dormancy, and that changes the hormones in a way that encourages them to, to grow and not to fruit. There are ways actually to keep them in balance during the winter time and to have proper pruning that we've talked a lot about in our pruning videos, by the way. Check that out either on any of the videos I've done here on YouTube. You can also go to my blog, figboss.com. But if you do winter, uh, summer pruning, excuse me, where during the active growing season, we can do something called topping or pinching or nipping or summer pruning. These change the hormones in a way that encourages them instead of to grow, but instead to fruit and be back in the right hormonal balance that we want them to be in. Now, maybe I guess you guys have other purposes. Maybe you want your trees to grow actually, and not to fruit. In fact, if you really hard prune them in the wintertime and cut them maybe even all the way to the base and leave almost nothing, they'll respond the following year by growing these big long suckers that are very vigorous that come from the soil line and can reach 10 to 15 feet in one season. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want to restart your fig tree. And I've always said, actually, that's a good way to make your fig tree actually a bit healthier to shake off some of that fig mosaic virus that your tree might be experiencing. Or maybe you have a really slow growing tree and you want it to get to a larger size. That's one of the best ways to do that is to really prune it hard. So everyone has different purposes, but it really does, I think, make a difference. The pruning that we do, the amounts of pruning that we do, and the types of pruning that we do. This is a tree here called Medieval Yavor. It's a variety called Medieval Yavor. It's a French variety. And uh, it, it, it really did get hit hard by the wintertime this year. And so I didn't mean to prune it this hard, although it just happened it's now responding with a lot of these suckers from the base that are low growing at this current moment. But by the end of the season, they're gonna be well over my head. And on contrast, you have a tree here called LSU Huye. Right next to it actually, behind it is another tree called JH Adriatic. We have a Texas BA1 here. All three of these have survived the winter time now, maybe even for their third consecutive season. And now they're in this right hormonal balance. We were able to preserve their apical and lateral buds. We did very minimal or almost none, no pruning in the wintertime, whether that was from cold or from our pruning shears. And as a result, they're growing actually very slowly and they're fruiting quite heavily. 
And this is the balance we want them to be in if that's your, that's your objective, which for most of us it probably should be. So my goal and what I try to encourage you guys to do is, is actually don't do a lot of winter pruning. Because the more pruning we do in the winter, as I said, it changes the balance and favors growth. But how do we actually prune them to keep them in this balance? Because we still have to, at the same time, control the size of our tree while also keeping it in a balance that encourages it to fruit. And so one of the ways we can do that are called thinning cuts rather than heading cuts. The conventional wisdom that you'll see with, fig, with uh, fruit trees in general is to just bring them all back by a third. You know, cut all the branches and bring them back by a third. Head every single branch back. And that's just the wrong wisdom to do in the wintertime. You wanna do that actually in the summertime for most of your fruiting plants. The fig tree, I would keep the summer pruning limited to mostly the, the tips. You can bring them back actually and have them reflush and actually put out more figs. I know people do that in the tropics. They do that in uh, really long climates like Southern California and they get two crops of figs off of them that way or even three crops of figs off of them that way. So what I would recommend though is just don't prune them in a way that's a heading cut. If you're trying to keep your fig tree smaller, go to the center of your tree and remove a bigger branch like this one here, an older branch, and cut that whole thing out down there at the base and remove the entire system of branch. That's called a thinning cut. If you have like three branches here as an example and it's too crowded and you wanna bring back the height of your tree, well, make a thinning cut. Remove one of the three branches to give the other two more light. So I would come in here and take out this entire branch all the way down here as far as I can go without cutting into the other two. Rather than actually coming in here and doing a heading cut and removing a third or even half of the growth, that's only gonna put our tree in the wrong balance. And it's all about these buds because every bud on the fig tree, guys, is different. And the apical and lateral buds, the higher buds on our tree, which by the way, that's like the top third of the buds on our fig trees. If we remove those top third buds, we're only leaving basically what I would call vegetative buds. And these vegetative buds can fruit. I call them vegetative because I don't have a better name for them. Maybe some of you guys have a better name that you could suggest. But um, these buds have a much harder time fruiting. And because of this hormonal balance, they typically need more sunlight as well. It's not impossible for them to fruit. And so as an example, this LSU Huye tree here is really good at fruiting um, even on the suckers that it produces. So if I hard prune this LSU Huye tree, it'll be fine actually, it'll still produce. It's amazing uh, how fruitful this particular variety is and how it stays in the right balance almost all the time. Uh, but other varieties like, uh, let's say this medieval Yavor, they will not fruit if you hard prune them. And every variety is different. They just respond very differently to pruning than other varieties. So it's a general rule of thumb, keep pruning to a limited amount. And if you are gonna be doing this pruning, make thinning cuts, not heading cuts. And that will make sure that your tree is in this balance and you don't have this problem. And we're not leaving these vegetative buds and removing the actual fruitful buds like the apical and lateral buds that are found on the top one third of the branches. These suckers down here have an even worse chance, the ones that come up from the soil have an even worse chance to fruit, and they may not fruit at all. And as I said, if you leave these, they'll probably grow to like 10 or 15 feet tall by the end of the season. Again, depending on the variety. How do you know if your fig tree is in hormonal balance? It's determined by the node spacing. So you see the distance here between the nodes, between the leaves? It's really not that far apart. And this is why this Rondé Bordeaux is fruiting very heavily. Same thing over here with this LSU Huye. The nodes are extremely close together. If you look here at this, this medieval Yavor tree, look at the further distance here between the nodes. It's not a ton of a distance. Here we go, here's a better example. 
on this white Marseille sucker that's coming up. See the distance there? That's quite extreme. And so this is a surefire way without even getting like a microscope, without doing this scientifically. How do you know your fig tree is in the balance is by that node spacing. And when you see the closer node spacing, you're inevitably going to see the fruit set that you want, especially if you've given it enough light, you maximize the light that we've talked about in so many other videos. And, uh, and that's basically there guys, a lesson on the plant hormones within fig trees. I hope you guys will like this video, hit that subscribe button and check out the blog figboss.com. There are many articles I've written already about hormones. And so if you want to learn more about that, check out the blog figboss.com. We'll see you soon. Take care.